investigating for you. This is News 4 Tucson, live at 10. We want to start out with some breaking news. Two women suffered life-threatening injuries and a man with minor injuries after a crash on Interstate 10 at Cortero. This is a live look at the scene now. Northwest Fire says two of the people were traveling westbound when they rolled their SUV three times and were ejected from the car. We'll bring you more information as we receive it. Good evening, everybody. Congresswoman Martha McSally is about to take office. It will be the first time her boundary section of southern Arizona has been represented by a Republican in eight years. News 4 Tucson's Sam Sauls Wadel has more on what's next. Sam? So Martha McSally's basically been campaigning for years now. And this week, she'll finally take the office that she won by just 161 votes. On Fox News Sunday, Martha McSally was invited to talk about her freshman priorities. The economy and security. Those are really the two main issues. Democrats, business owners can agree that they want to grow their small business. Kids graduating from college want to have job opportunities. So those are not politically charged issues. It didn't take long before they mentioned immigration. We've got to focus on the root causes, which is border security and modernizing the legal immigration system so it's responsive to our economic needs. Juanita Molina is the executive director of the Border Action Network, which lobbies for comprehensive immigration reform. Martha McSally at this point is an unknown entity for us. I think one of the most important aspects of leadership within border communities is to temper the voices and find the middle ground of what's necessary in order to keep our communities safe. And so it's difficult to say what will happen next. She's hopeful the new Congress will not waste time trying to fight the president. One of the pieces that the Republicans don't see is that it's bad for business. It's bad for community development. And so I think that they're losing a lot of base support. McSally also talked about the economic impact of immigration reforms. If somebody wants to come here to work or they graduate from the University of Arizona with a PhD, they don't go back to one of our competitors. We actually give them an opportunity to come here, work, pay taxes. Everything she does will be watched closely in one of the most competitive congressional districts in America. And McSally also spent a fair amount of time talking about national security and representing a district that includes Davis Mountain Air Force Base and Fort Huachuca. Rebecca. All right, Sam, thanks. And tomorrow, our state will have a new governor, the 23rd one, in fact. Republican Doug Ducey will have his inauguration ceremony tomorrow up in Phoenix, where he'll be sworn in. He's replacing Governor Jan Brewer, who's held the position for six years now. With most schools hitting the books again tomorrow, Tucson Unified School District will be welcoming several new additions, among them school resource officers, or SROs. They will be added to campuses and uh, many of the schools starting tomorrow. The city council made the decision last month, but only after making it very clear officers cannot ask about a student's immigration status. When you hear the term sex trafficking, we often think about it happening in countries far away, when in fact it's a major problem in our own backyard. An Arizona state representative is planning to propose new legislation so those memories of being trafficked don't haunt survivors as they try to move forward. Victoria Steele will present the legislation in about two weeks. It would expunge any convictions of prostitution for minors in Arizona, if convicted of prostitution, you have to tell any potential employer for 99 years. Those rap sheets basically follow a person throughout their lives so that later when they have to apply for a job or they have to apply for a loan or they, they do a background check, they have to talk about it and they have to completely, constantly report this as though it's something that they did that was bad, that was wrong, and it's so connected with, with a lot of shame things. The average age girls enter prostitution in the U.S. is 13. In Tucson and Phoenix, the age is 15. Most children are coerced into being trafficked. Only 2% have gotten involved willingly. Starting this month, sex trafficking training will be a basic requirement for all law enforcement recruits. You might remember Governor Jan Brewer made the announcement back in October. Three people are in the hospital tonight after a single vehicle rollover crash. It happened around 4 p.m. on Interstate 19 near Pima Mine Road. Five people were in the car, two are adults and three are children. Exactly who was transported or the extent of their injuries has not yet been released. 
It's back to court tomorrow for a Mesa woman accused of running over her husband because he didn't vote in the 2012 presidential election. Holly Solomon is charged with aggravated assault and disorderly conduct. Her husband suffered a fractured pelvis. Hear that? Well, that's the sound of a gas line break after a man crashed into a gas meter at a north side home this morning. It happened near Ina and Oracle. Two homes were evacuated until Southwest Gas could fix the break. The driver of the car was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Northwest Fire says if you hear that hissing sound or smell rotten eggs, evacuate and call 911 immediately. A structure fire on the north side had rural metro fire crews trekking through piles of trash to make sure that no one was inside. It happened just after 1230 this afternoon near River and Craycroft. Rural metro confirmed the fire started in the kitchen. No one was found inside. It was heavy snowfall like this that made for icy roads causing a deadly crash in the Texas Panhandle. Three people from Phoenix were killed in the two-car crash. One of them was an 11-year-old boy. Police say their Chevy Tahoe was going too fast for the road conditions, spun into oncoming traffic, and hit another car. Five other people were also injured in that collision. Mount Lemmon Highway was shut down today due to overcrowding for the third day in a row, as hundreds again rushed to take advantage of the recent snowfall. It was only closed for a few hours before sheriff's deputies opened it back up again. John? All right, Sean, and here's what the fuss was all about. People trying to get up the hill to play in the foot of fresh powder that fell on New Year's Day. This is about 10 hours of footage collapsed down into uh, 10 seconds, actually. If I can try to go back to that, here we go. Here's your Pokemos.net time lapse. Temperatures in the upper 30s and low 40s on the mountain today, but that sunshine made it feel pretty good. Good day to uh, get up there and have a snowball fight, that's for sure. Now, we've had four straight freezing nights here in Tucson, but I think that comes to an end tonight. It's 45 degrees right there at the airport. Temperatures down into the 30s across most of Cochise County, but we do have a work week warm up in your forecast. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a bit, Sean. All right, thank you, John. The Sun Devils got a chilly reception tonight. The Wildcats took on our desert rivals, Arizona State. News 4 Tucson Sports Director Paul Sakala here with how he snagged this win. Paul? Well, after Arizona's loss to UNLV on December 23rd, the Cats had 12 days before they could suit up again tonight. And I'm sure Coach Sean Miller made the Wildcats think about that loss every single day in practice. Whatever the case, hey, it did pump the Cats up to work hard, and it showed tonight. From the get go, the Cats came out strong. Right off the bat, TJ McConnell will bust the three pointer to put the Cats up. Within the first minute, Arizona would set a strong defensive tone as well. And on the offensive side of the coin, how about Rondé Hollis-Jefferson spinning and grinning? That turnaround would put the Cats up 29-13. He had 13 points, grab eight rebounds, and dish out four assists. The Wildcats run away with it, 73-49. to Here is Coach Sean Miller talking defense. We wanted to pressure the ball and... and uh, there's a lot of things that we've learned about our team through the non-conference season, and we're going to be better when we harass you, when we are active, when we pick up our pressure. And uh, we didn't have that pressure the other night in our loss. Well, they certainly did tonight. Coming up later in sports, we'll hear more from Wildcat players. Plus, I'll have in-depth highlights as the Cats broke off their 30th consecutive victory at the Kell Center. We'll see you in a bit later in sports. All right, thanks, Paul. All is right in the world once again. Up next at 10, a second NYPD officer laid to rest today as thousands gather to say goodbye, including officers from right here in Tucson. And a candid surprise for police when they caught a burglar. Keep it right here. News 4 at 10. We'll be right back. Investigating for you. This is News 4 Tucson.